Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about a very good card that's very popular in the meta, Colt Neophyte. Uh, it's a card that actually often very underperforms, however, and I think part of the reason, while it's still definitely worth it right now, is players don't know good timings on when to play it. It's often, you know, you know, tempo, you want to spend your mana, you want to play things, but realistically, there are times where we should really just be waiting and trying to find the ideal times for the Colt Neophyte as opposed to just, you know, just playing it down and like, oh, I don't know, I just want to play something and hopefully. So I want to talk about in this video um, different decks and what are some ideal times and what are some things to look out for and when that Colt Neophyte can be really good and when it's a little bit weaker, uh, when you should save it, or when you should just use it as a 3-2, stuff like that. Um, so remember, Cold Neophyte, I think when it's the, the when it's the most useful, most reliable, is when you're playing into one card, powerful plays that your opponent does. So some of the, the most common ones are like Refreshing Spring Water, Skull of Gul'dan, uh, Twisting Nether, cards like those. So... You know, if you're playing against a Warlock, often they might be trying to go Coin Nether or Nether on their turn 8 and use that to stabilize against you while playing Strongman. Playing the Cold Neophyte into that turn can be insanely powerful. So often if you're, you know, if you're, let's say you draw a Cold Neophyte on 5 against a Warlock, it might be worth it to float some mana, do some suboptimal turns just so you can del to throw off that play. Often certain decks... When you, uh, they really need to do their, 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 their power play on that turn because they've thrown away their other cards. You know, Demon Hunter might intentionally be dropping a lot of cards just so they can play their skull. And all of a sudden you go Cold Neophyte and they have to wait a turn. And that can just completely throw them off. So something that's very strong about the card, but it's all about the timing, uh, knowing when to wait. So I just want to go over some popular classes. Uh, some popular decks on ladder and we're gonna look uh, at what I think some of the ideal things to do so here first I want to go at no minion mage one of the the most popular decks and one of the number one reasons why we run cold neophyte um, and we can see so one of the things I um, to note is that cold neophyte if your opponent has gone font of power is a lot weaker so um, often, if your opponent goes Font of Power, Cold Neophyte is not going to pull the same punch. Um, think if if I go Cold Neophyte, can my opponent just play a minion and call it a day? Um, often, I think people overvalue playing Cold Neophyte into the Encanter's Flow because it's not that much pressure. So if you already have some stuff and you can delay a Encanter's Flow, uh, like you have an amazing start, um, but like, but if you do it a turn after... Um, like you just play cold neophyte and it's the only thing your opponent can wait a turn then that you play something else they go encanter's flow brain freeze kill your cult um they lost a turn but you played one of your strongest cards in a uh in a tough matchup in a weak position so often uh knowing just getting lower the mana the worst cold neophyte is because every card is a spell so cold neophyte on eight mana is actually like fantastic so the longer you can wait realistically without throwing your position away but there are some key spots and i think with the with the refreshing water spring water nerf um going into five mana plus where they have refreshing spring water plays they have uh you know they have the apexis blast plays um often your, your opponent is looking to do a big play on turn four or turn five or turn six so those tend to be really good turns so uh, sometimes I think like uh, the stats say Cold Neophyte is actually better kept going first, but not on coin uh, against Mage, which is interesting. So I think the, the philosophy there is, you know, if you can play Colt and kind of shut them out and not use their coin, sometimes you can get a tempo advantage on two. But often, especially on coin, you're better off playing the card on turn four or turn five. Um, and because you know, uh, especially going into their turn five, they want to go refreshing spring water and now they can't. Um, and that can throw off their plans. Uh, but yeah, also the other thing, remember, sometimes if they've gone font, uh, trying to get a read on their hand. So this is another really important skill of the cold neophyte. So let's say my opponent goes font um, on one, they ping on two, um, they ping on three. 
there's a lot of five and six of cost mage minions. So there might be a good chance that they don't have a four, turn four play either. Um, but they might have a turn five play. So going Colt into their turn five might not work out so well because they're just going to plop a minion. They might plop, you know, that five mana six four or a uh, Mazaki. Uh, there's a lot of things they might plop. The fact that they didn't play any minions, but let's say they dumped all their minions. Now Cold Neophyte goes way up in value because they only have spells in their hand. So that's that's something to be thinking about. Can you read your opponent's hand? What minions do they have? What are their likely plays? Another really great time to go uh, Cold Neophyte against Mage. Uh, be thinking if if was when uh, the time with their uh, often they'll go in the Imprisoned Phoenix. So look at Imprisoned Phoenix either from Font or from Primordial Studies. And they're often timing a big play. Uh, you play a cold neophyte into the turn that their imprisoned phoenix comes up, and all of a sudden they're very limited on what they can do. Uh, you know, so they might be able, might have been able to play five or six spells, and now they only can play two or three. That's a big deal. So that, those are, I think, the two number one times: imprisoned phoenix turns and turn five. But any time against mage, realistically. Uh, but I think the biggest deal is when you're head on board. So uh, you know, if you're head on board. Being able to keep that board advantage going with Cold Neophyte is really good. Where when you're behind on board, Cold Neophyte, not nearly as good. So sometimes when you're behind on board, you might want to, if you have other plays, sometimes you just you want to do a tempo play. Maybe you're drawing with field contact uh, and you really want to get that tempo. But uh, a lot of times if you don't have uh, stuff on board uh, or if you have other plays, maybe you do a Jandis uh, first on the turn six. And then if something sticks, then maybe you play something else. And then when you're finally starting to get ahead, and they're 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 like, oh, and maybe they have they're planning on going a flame strike, and then you go cult. So I think don't be too eager to just throw your cult away. Uh, be looking to, but at the same time, you know, don't be too greedy. And that's the art of it. Uh, there aren't perfect solutions. Uh, sometimes you wait for the cult and you get punished. Sometimes you don't wait for the cult. You play it and they just have the perfect minion and it doesn't do anything. So, uh, and that's going to happen sometimes, but that's what I want you to be thinking about. I think key turns like Refreshing Spring Water, be thinking about Imprisoned Phoenix. Those are the, probably some of the biggest ones. Um, and also when you're ahead against Mage, uh, Cold Neophyte becomes a lot stronger. Next, uh, we got Secret Lever and Paladin. Um, and this is a deck that it, Cold Neophyte's not very good against. Uh, I would say most of the time you just play it as a 3-2. The one exception to the rule is Lemur of Hope. So let's say you're kind of getting a board advantage, you're going this. Often Lemur of Hope is what the Paladin is doing. They're kind of running out of early game stuff. Um, so let's say they haven't, they didn't play any Aldor Attendants, but they played an Aldor True Seeker on five. They're not on coin, you're on coin. So uh, they play their turn six and they're going into their turn seven. Playing the Colt before that turn seven might be a fantastic line. So normally if you have a Colt one, two, three, four, I would say play it. Just don't worry about it. Uh, don't worry about the perfect play. It's, you're not going to get a great line. Uh, but the exception is, let's say, uh, they go Aldor True Seeker on five, and you kind of wanted to go Colt on five just for tempo, but you might say, I'm going to wait two turns to deny their Libra Hope turn. That can be very strong. So I think that's the one key thing for uh, uh, Libra and Paladin uh, to wait. Other than that, don't be too eager to wait. Uh, just accept that you're not going to get too much value. Your cult is not very good against Libra and Paladin. Token Druid, Cold Neophyte is one of the strongest cards. I, it's actually even stronger, in my opinion, than against Mage. Uh, Cold Neophyte can completely shut out games. Um, but it's, it's a tough one to, to choose of knowing what's the ideal turn. Um, and I was thinking about this. And one of the things I like to think about is, um, so let's say, for example, your opponent went guess the weight on two and you didn't use it on two. I don't like using it on two. Uh, you can deny guess the weight, but that's, I don't think that big a deal. So they went guess the weight on two in theory. Um, and you have decided, do you play like, you know, let's say cold Neil fight one thief, uh, maybe you played efficient Octobot on two. You've got a good start going. Um, so one of the things is, uh, the reason you'd play that is to mainly to not, you can deny a gibberling play or you can deny a lightning bloom glow uh, a lightning bloom glow fly play um, and it can be tough uh, but one of the things I like to think about is so if I play my Colt neophyte and they just don't do anything what do I do next turn and do that do I win so let's say for example let's say assume they had the good play I go Colt neophyte they don't do anything. They do a horrible hero power turn. And then I do something. 
and then they go their powerful turn. Am I in a winning position or am I not? Um, so if I'm not in a winning position, um, like let's say I, I'm not going to be able to remove that board anyways and I just lose, um, it might be worth it to, to wait. The reason why is you lose either way when they have it, so you assume they don't have it. Uh, on, but but if you let's say let's say you've got a field contact play, you've got a bunch of stuff, and you, you can just delay their mana. You can go field contact, shadow step, do some ridiculous stuff. It can be really nice to say, hey, guess what? You're not going to go glow fly this turn. You're not going to go gibberling. You're going to wait another turn. That can be really strong. Um, but the ideal time, if you're greedy, is to go into their like turn four with coin. Uh, or turn four, but to deny a coin go fly, or if they really haven't hit into their turn five, uh, most of the time you're going to play it earlier to deny them. Um, another thing that's real nice is to play it earlier when you have a shadow step in hand, or a ten wound in hand, or even a secret passage in hand. I like playing it with a secret passage in hand, and if they don't remove it, and the only real way they have to remove it is lunar eclipse, what's nice is you go secret passage, you hit a ten wound, you hit a shadow step, you're in business. They're having a whole another turn where they can't do the plays they want to do. So uh, that's what I like to think about against Druid. Very powerful card. And, you know, using your shadow steps on, on Cold Neophyte, using your Tenwu, just getting as many Cold Neophytes out as, uh, throughout the game. I also find getting two Cold Neophytes against Druid not as good um, as maybe Mage, for example. Now, if you're just setting up for the two-turn lethal, go for it. But if you, if you have to go a little bit longer... Druid has a lot of trouble with even one colonial fight doing anything because they have changed so many spells. Um, if they want to go Glowfly now, they almost can never get a buff. If they want to go Gibberling, they, they can barely do anything. So even with just one colonial fight. So uh, unless you're like shutting them out to go for the win, um, I would prefer to like, let's say you had two Shadow Steps and colonial fight. You know, I might play the colonial fight and then uh, you have to decide also when you Shadow Step. So let's say you feel like you need the pressure. Um, you might not shadow step it immediately because the problem is they can just wait. Remember, if if it's shadow if shadow stepping the cold neophyte only delays our fate, uh, or it's not as good. But when it secures our win, it's better. So that's what I like to think about cold neophyte against druid. All right, next I want to talk about lifesteal demon hunter or OTK demon hunter. The key spot to play cold neophyte is into skull turns. But one in this deck, your hand reading skills can be massive. So let's say your opponent has an Illidari Studies card. They have a card in the left. Uh, they have uh, a card that very much looks like Skull. Um, then it's very, very good to go Cold Neophyte. But sometimes you might have a read uh, that they don't have Skull in the right. Um, the way they're playing it, uh, they might just be keep going. So they try and getting a read on what's their hand. Sometimes you can delay a cult if you're really good at hand reading. But in general, uh, when in doubt, play it to deny the skull. Often, the, the Demon Hunter player is planning around... Uh, when I'm playing Demon Hunter, my general plan is clear the board on five to secure the skull on six. You can't do both. So you really don't like playing skull to force yourself to hit a board clear. So you, on the other hand, uh, by playing the, the cult, often let's say that you do an Immolation Order, now they're playing going skull... They can't go skull. So let's say if they don't have another clear, then you get a whole free turn. Then they go skull. If they don't hit a clear, you win. So very, very good. Um, I'm the kind of I've seen people play cold neophyte against me on two horrible play. Uh, I think it's 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 why you have the best card against me, and you're doing it just for tempo. Demon Hunter has Chaos Strike, they have War Blades, they have I Beam. One little 3 2 ain't gonna do much, but denying a Skull for a turn can be huge. So, this is one of the classes where I'd say almost never use it up until their Skull turn. Um, you can also use it if you know, maybe to deny an Immolation play if you have a really big board, maybe two Divine Shields, Buy Fives, stuff like that. But the main play is deny the Skull. Uh, you deny the Skull enough times, you win. Uh, later on, you might do it to try and, in a desperation play, to, to, to deny lethal. But the main thing you do it is to deny the skull. Deny the skull, and you just completely wreck the OTK Demon Hunter's plans. And uh, Priest, uh, we'll talk briefly about Priest. Uh, Priest is actually a really hard one because realistically, they have so much heal, they have so much delay, and they have minion plays. So Priest is one that 
Uh, it's really hard. So often, you know, if you can deny one play, but I don't expect you to, to uh, saving it for the perfect spots isn't necessarily good. I think I definitely like it with like a field contact just to get draw, but uh, Priest is a class that I think Cold Neophyte isn't as valuable as it seems. You think, oh, Priest does have a lot of spells, but they also have a lot of minion plays. So maybe if you have a key thing, like let's say you're playing around Blade Master Apotheosis, but sometimes like they might have gone palm reading, you're playing into their turn seven, but they have a two man ap- Apotheosis. So even your ability to hand read there can be helpful. Sometimes you can play, but it's a tough one in this matchup to to get a lot of value out of. You know, maybe you can deny a Soul Mirror, maybe you can die something fancy, but in general, expect that. You're just going to be doing it to deny a little bit of tempo uh, and not doing anything that crazy uh, with the cold needle fight. So, um, and that's okay. But um, yeah, well, we could talk about the mirror. Um, the mirror is one, I think, uh, especially if you think your opponent's setting up for a field contact play, often they want to use shadow steps. Often they want to do brain freezes. Uh, often they want to do swindles. So a nice uh, cold needle fight into that. Another one, though, tempo is king. So uh, I think also denying coin. If your opponent has coin, a cold neophyte can make things more difficult for them. Uh, But tempo is king, so just be spending your mana. Uh, This isn't a matchup where I think you're saving cold neophytes for the perfect times. Sometimes you just got to take it. A lot of times, actually, in this high tempo, you want to be spending your mana in that matchup. Oh, and let's talk about control warlock. Uh, Control warlock... Um, I think is an example of one where there are some really bad turns to play. So um, some of the good turns to play, Cold Neophyte, um, are to deny things like uh, School Spirits and Cascade uh, game. But the problem with School Spirits is, well, usually you're not going to have a big board enough to deny it uh, early. And later on, um, it's not as... Uh, and, you know, same thing with Drain Soul. Like if you play it on two, they just go tap, they can go Drain Soul the next turn. So it's often not very valuable but uh i think it turns one through four you just play cold neophyte um just as tempo turn to turn five they're usually going an ogre mancer you can see most lists running ogre mancer and talon um there's some run the void drinker generally i don't think it's very good into the turn five they're usually playing a minion uh but i think denying the nether is the big thing so if you're ahead if you can deny another that's that's the spot where if you're getting ahead and you think you can push a win, uh, denying another can close out the game. So that's the biggest one against Warlock. So anyways, hope this Cold Neophyte guide was helpful. Start thinking about what are the ideal times to play this card. When should you wait? When should you be greedy with it? When should you not be greedy with it? Just start, the more your brain pays attention to these things, the more you'll pick up. But I hope I gave you some introductory. Uh, Remember, it's better when you're ahead and it's best into key powerful cards that your opponent wants to play. Um, So those are the two spots and it's actually better at higher amounts of mana than lower amounts of mana. So those are the general rules on Cold Neophyte. Remember, you still sometimes just got to play it for tempo. So, So be thinking about these things, but... Remember, there are no always in Hearthstone. So anyways, hope that was helpful and enjoy. Enjoy.